This is a topic that can be especially challenging for students. Solving equations that are quadratic-like. And we're going to do these using substitutions. So I started off with an example that's actually a quadratic equation. Notice the highest power of x is a 2, x is squared. And it's an equals, and it's already set equal to 0. And I've been especially nice in giving you one that factors. So leading coefficients 1, so I'm looking for the pair of factors of 6 that add to give 5. Be careful because there's the pair that subtracts to get 5 as well. And we want the one that adds because the 6 is positive. So we'll get x plus 2 times x plus 3 equals 0. And then the zero factor property, multiplication problem equals 0. Then somebody going in had to be a 0, either the x plus 2 or the x plus 3, which gives us the two solutions to this quadratic equation x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 3. Now, when I move to my next example, I don't have x squared. My highest power is an x to the fourth, but it should have that same kind of feel to it. I have three terms. I have two terms have variables in them. The third one doesn't, so I can't take out a greatest common factor. So if you let Here's what, where that substitution. Substitution is, is we're going to change letters. So we're going to let u equal p squared. And I can hear you saying, why? Why would I do that? OK, well, watch. If I square u, so just go u squared. If u is equal to p squared, then u squared would have to be, if I squared this side, I square this side. If I square p squared, I get p to the fourth. Now rewrite the equation you were given using u's. So the first thing I have is p to the fourth, but that's the same thing as u squared plus 5p squared, but p squared is the same thing as u. So plus 5u plus 6 equals 0. So now I've done the substitution, and I now have a quadratic equation. So I'll solve that just like I did before. So u plus 2 times u plus 3 equals 0. u equals negative 2, or u equals negative 3. We could be done if anybody asked us about u's, but nobody really asked us what u equals. We wanted to know what does p equal. So now we need to back substitute to get back to p's. So u being replaced with a p squared. p squared equals negative 2. And p squared equals negative 3. Again, if anybody asked us about p squareds, we could be done. But we were asked to find p. So square root both sides. p equals, and I'm out of room, so I'm going to do this in my head. Stay with me. I'm going to square root, so I do plus minus. There's going to be a negative sign under the radical. I'll bring that out as an i, and then just a radical 2 underneath. Exact same steps over here. p equals plus or minus i times the square root of 3. So the next example that we have, I'm keeping my same coefficients. Now this one, it's a bit trickier, but take a look at it. I have something squared plus 5 times that exact same something, plus 6 equals 0. Now, you are more than um, able to FOIL out this, distribute the 5, tidy up, and solve from there. I promise you I will get there before you do doing it my way. U, this time, is going to be that little bundle that we have squared. So if u is 7x minus 1, and rewrite this equation in u's, I'm going to get u squared plus 5, 7x minus 1. That's what we're letting u be. So 5 times u plus 6 equals 0. I'm going to go ahead and skip that step where we factor it, because we've done it a couple times. So the solutions to this one are u equals negative 2 and u equals negative 3. But I, remember, I don't want u's. I want x's. u is the same thing as 7x minus 1. So 7x minus 1 equals negative 2, or 7x minus 1 equals negative 3. And I'm out of room, so we'll do that in our heads. x equals add the 1, get negative 1. 
divided by 7, so negative 1 7th. Here, add 1, we'll get negative 2, divide by 7, or x equals negative 2 7ths. And we're done.